but you run the risk of also bringing in the player and he may actually take away from what you're doing. You know, how do you mitigate those risks? How do you balance, you know, risk and reward when it comes to the trade deadline? It's a happy Tuesday, NFC East fans, and good morning, NFC East. Once again, my name is Jeff Kerr from CBSSports.com. And got my man Tone Shields here. Yes, sir. But what, what's the vibes on this Tuesday? How you feeling, man? Oh, tired. I'll be honest. Tired, tired, tired. And it, it's early in the week still. But nonetheless, man, when you're talking about football, it uh it charges you up, it re-energizes you. You know what I mean? So, you know, the vibes around the city are fascinating because everyone wants the Philadelphia Eagles to, I guess, upset the apple cart or make a splash at the trade deadline, right? And, you know, the Christian McCaffrey trade was the first domino to fall. But where it is that the Eagles were actually very in on that on, on that trade, but obviously the Panthers went with the team that gave them the better compensation, which was the 49ers. But, Kerr, you know, what have you heard around the NFL? What have you heard, you know, around, around your neck of the woods when it comes to the Christian McCaffrey trade, the details, and just where the Eagles were in that situation? Well, there was some legitimacy to it, right? I, I, the Eagles, I, I'm going to say this. The Eagles call about everybody. It doesn't mean they make an offer, but they call to see if you're interested. Or in, in the Panthers' case, Christian McCaffrey. I think, look, this is all speculation here. I, I just think the Panthers probably said, you know what, the Eagles, you got two first-round picks. We want one of them. And I just think the Eagles said, no, they're not giving up a first-round pick for a running back. Again, this is speculation here. This isn't, you know, me trying to report anything. Uh, but I do know the Eagles, they call about players j just to call because that's what good GMs do. Howie Roseman has done that. And yeah. I think Howie Roseman's going to make a move at the deadline. I don't know if it's going to be a sexy move or not, but I think the Christian McCaffrey thing just – to me, it just – there's a smoke screen there. Hey, look, we're trying to improve a lot. Whether it's running back, whether it's pass rusher, I think they're going to do something. I, I I just don't know if it's going to be major or not. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think they need to do anything major, if you ask me. Um, I know a lot of people were on the Brian Burns train, and some people still are. Uh, the rumor around that I'm hearing is that they want two first-round picks or something like that. But let's be let's be frank. If the Panthers were offered two first round picks for Brian Burns, they would have took it. They would have uh, took I, it. I, I agree. So, yeah. so I just feel like all of that, like you said, a lot of smoke screens, a lot of trade deadline, fuqua going on. You know what I mean? So um I'm really curious to see what the Eagles do. But like you said, I think it's gonna be something a little bit more role player esque. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm, I don't think they really need much. You know, Jeff, let me ask you, right? You look at this Eagles team, you've been covering it all season. Are, are there any holes on his roster? Is there anywhere that you would like them to add more depth? Um, Probably pass rush, if anything. I mean, I don't think they need a Brian Burns. But there are guys out there you can get on the cheap. Um, I'm sure the Bears love to unload Robert Quinn right now, if you want to be honest. He's been a huge disappointment. I mean, they've been trying to tra try to trade him in the offseason. They just couldn't do it. So now his value is really down. Maybe you can get him. Cheap again. I'm just throwing names out there. I, I mean, I, I think a guy like that would help the pass rush for sure. And the, the Eagles' pass rush is good. It's fine, right? I mean, how, they really didn't need to do much in 2017 either. But Howie Roseman saw an opportunity to get a guy like Jay Ajayi and say, you know what? We got the like Garrett Blunt, we got Corey Clement, Darren Sproles is out for the year. Why not have somebody like that? Why not have a an extra weapon in your offense? Maybe yeah, go Robert, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, good. oh no, yeah, I was just saying, yeah, adding Robert Quinn would definitely add more to this pass rush. Um, see the thing about being in Chicago, you know, he's being asked to be the guy for the most part on the on the defensive line, you know. And if he comes to Philly, we have depth. You know, there's you know, there's rotational pieces. He won't have to be out there on every single play. He could probably focus more on rushing the passer. But you know, what I've been hearing also is uh Bradley Chubb, you know, have you heard anything around the league about the Eagles being interested in Bradley Chubb from the Broncos? 
I, I haven't heard anything on Chubb yet. I, I know the Broncos are trying to sell some players, obviously, because they're two and five, and who knows when the heck Russell Wilson's coming back. I really don't think Daniel Hackett's going to last the year there. So that's a new name. I, I So I, I'll say this is a trade deadline. You hear names, you hear reports. I was telling you this backstage. You just kind of go in one ear and out the other. When I heard that th- about the Panthers thing, oh, they turned down two first-round picks for Brian Burns, I'm like, yeah, it all depends who offered them. Like, I know the Los Angeles Rams are interested in adding a pass rusher, right? They ain't got two first round picks. <laughs> well, they do have two first round picks. They just don't have any recent first round picks. So true, true. if you're the Panthers, you're trying to rebuild now. Why would you want a first round pick in 2025 and 2026? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 2030. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's yeah, it, it really is F them picks there. Like if the 49ers offer you draft picks, we're like, well. Wait, what, what draft picks you have? You just traded all your draft picks. You tra- trade all your p- draft picks for Trey Lance and Christian McCaffrey. Um, I, I can see why the Eagles, though, would be curious about McCaffrey because they wanted to draft him in 2017. They, they were interested in him then. They were interested in Christian McCaffrey a couple times over over the years. Like I think he's a guy like him, fits their skill set. I, I, I would like to see them do that, I, I, honestly, Tone. I think if they would – add to their roster, maybe a pass catching back. It, it, it Doesn't that seem like that's the one thing they're kind of missing? Yeah, definitely. And you, we thought Kenny Gainwell would take that next leap entering this season. You know what I mean? We thought he would be that guy. But, you know, so far, Kenny hasn't really been able to be a threat in the passing game. And, you know, there's going to come a time where we're going to have to start, you know, asking ourselves, is this a role that he can actually fill? Um, I know it's still relatively early in his career. He's in his second season, but you know, it's a reason, it's a reason they're not putting him out there in those situations as much as they could. But I think you're right though. Ultimately, the pass catching back has always been a staple in the Eagles offense. You think about Brian Westbrook, you think about LaShawn McCoy, who wasn't really a prototypical pass and catching back like B like like B West was, but he still did it. Um, even Deuce Daly did it at, um, at times and stuff like that. So, uh, that's, you know, that's just something that, that they're used to. They, the Philadelphia Eagles are notoriously known for being a screen team, even back in the Andy Reid days. Uh, one of the best screen teams to ever play with during the Andy Reid era. That was, you know, that was some beautiful screenplay. Um, but, you know, I have to ask you, right? Even people love to talk about the trade deadline and they love to talk about how players can add. But you run the risk of also bringing in the player and he may actually take away from what you're doing. You know, how do you mitigate those risks? How do you balance, you know, risk and reward when it comes to the trade deadline? See, this is why I think the Eagles make not like a major splash, but like my moves. Like, you say you add, um, I, I don't even know a name to throw out there. I, I'm just thinking um, just number two running back. You know, say, say you add like a, I, here, I, I'll throw a guy out. Mike Boone. I'm not saying the Eagles would get a guy like Mike Boone, but you know what I mean? Like like a pass catching back like that. Does it really affect what you're doing, though? Like, like you're just adding him in there for death. Like, Miles Sanders is still your guy. You're still going to use Kenny Gainwell in certain spots, but you're going to put a guy like that in your offense. You know, it's not like Christian McCaffrey where, okay, we got to find a way to get Christian McCaffrey the ball. We got to find a way to get him in, make him use, you know, make him use plays. Like, Wide receiver, I think that that's where it gets tricky. Like, if you're the Green Bay Packers and you add wide receiver for the trade deadline, it's balls to the wall, right? Because they don't have anybody. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, they add somebody. Andy Reid's going to find a way to implement them as best as he can. But with the Eagles, I mean, I'll say this about the Eagles. There are a couple of things I don't want them to do at the deadline. I don't want them trading Andre Dillard. No. I agree. I agree. Uh, I, really quickly, I don't know why – there are some people, there are some analysts who are hell bent on doing that. And my mindset is we've already seen how important all offensive line depth is this early in the season. Why the hell would I trade a valuable offensive line piece like Andre Dillard, if, especially if I'm trying to make a Super Bowl run? I'm not trying to rebuild or anything. Like, I, I, I'd much rather take the risk of losing him in the offseason than trading him midseason. And then all of a sudden, a lot of goes down. He's still nursing that shoulder injury, by the way. Yeah, and, okay, I, I would understand the Eagles' viewpoint if oh, someone give, someone gets desperate and offers you a first-round pick and they say, you know what, we'll, we'll live. I, I got three first-round picks next year. It is what it is, right? Yeah, um, it, has, but, it has to be worth, worth their while, you know what I mean? 
Exactly. Like, I know a team's going to offer a first round pick for Andre Dillon. At least I don't think, you know, well, I could be eating my words at this time next week. By the way, that is the trade deadline. So I, I wanted to ask you this, Tony. Because the Giants are six and one, right. and they're still trying to sell off some pieces here. Pieces that aren't contributing, but they're pieces. Do you think they're buyers or sellers? The Giants? Hmm. Yeah, they should buy. In my opinion, they should buy. You know, so it's interesting because they're in a very unique position. They're second in the, they're second in the division. They can very well make a playoff push. It's because they've shown that they can beat teams in very unique ways. They're very disciplined. And being disciplined gets you far in the playoffs. You know, there there's there's gonna come a moment where talent has to, you know, shine through. But for the most part, discipline and focus really gets you through. And that's what they are right now. So I would, you know, I'll be aggressive. You know, I would, I, I would show my team that I believe in you that much. We're going to make a move. So, because you know, these players pay attention to the moves you make. And if you're passive, if you start just off selling guys, fire selling guys, they're going to be like, oh, okay. So this is, we're still the Giants. We're still, we, we're still not competing really. This is all just a facade. But if you start to make, but if you start to make moves as far as the like for the now, showing your team that a. Hey, I'm trying to bring in talent so we can be even more dominant, even more formidable, even more formidable. We're only a game away from being number one in the division. Why not us? Then I think that'd be awesome. See, I'm looking at it this way, too. You're six and one, right? You know, to win 10 games, you have to go only go four and six. With their schedule, I think that's more than possible. I, I, this is what I think the Giants are going to do. They need a wide receiver in the worst way. I don't think they, they will trade high draft picks for him, but there's a guy they can get for free in Odell Beckham. And I think there's mutual interest there. But you also got the Green Bay Packers, the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs. I know Odell's going to have a much bigger role in New York if he would go back a second stint. But if you're an Odell Beckham, I, I think if you're the Giants, I know they don't have much cow, salary cap space to work with here. You got to at least try to outbid these teams, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, Oda Beckham, he he has his Super Bowl ring already. So it's not really about that for him, really. It's about who's going to offer him the best payday. And I think he mentioned earlier in the season that the Rams kind of sent him a piss poor offer or didn't send him an offer at all. I can't remember exactly the details, but it was a low he, offer. Yeah. A really, really low ball offer. And, you know, he's a guy right now that's looking for more security than anything. He's been hurt the past few years, and he wants he he wants more dough. And I'm not mad at that at all. Get as much coin as you can, my man. Whoever's offering the bag, go get the bag from them. Um, I don't think the Giants are in a position to offer him a bag large enough uh, because they've had so many so many cap issues and they've been offloading players in the pre, you know in the, this past off season. So I mean, I, I'm not I'm not too privy to their cap situation right, right now today on October 25th, but I do think uh, it's possible. I mean, they can move some things around, and you, you listen, you never know. The NFL is a very wacky place. Anything is possible, especially this season. Oh, exactly, and look, if I'm, if I'm the Giants, I'm still trying to add. Tr I'm trying to upgrade somewhere. Like, say a DJ Moore. I, I, I think I would pay for him, and right now I would lowball for DJ Moore because Carolina just doesn't use him right. But they, just, they don't. They don't. But there's so many teams though that are going to try to get a guy like that. I mean, really, you're the Eagles. You made your big trade deadline splash before the season started. When you got Chauncey Gunner Johnson. If you think about it. Ah, uh, good point. So to me, that's and obviously getting that first round pick from the Saints. So I, I agree with you. I, I don't think the Eagles need to do much. I think the Giants need that at wide receiver. Let's go to the Cowboys quick. What do you? Their defense is so good. I don't think they need to add there. But do we think they need – they only got a running back. I don't think they'll add to the offensive line. Dallas isn't really a team that makes that splash. They did the one year when they got Amari Cooper. But that was when the Super Bowl window was pretty high. I, I yeah. just don't know. Their history tells me Dallas isn't going to do anything. Yeah, I'm looking at their roster now, and I don't really see where a move would make much sense. Uh, I think they're pretty much going to go into the playoffs or try to get into the playoffs at least um, as is. You know, you think about the offensive line, you know, they're starting to come together. And 
you know, I just like, again, I'm looking at this roster and I just don't see where they need to make a knee jerk reaction. I just I, I don't see a move where they get better. Uh, if you ask me, they have pretty good depth in the defensive line. Um, off, uh, all offense look is, is pretty fine. You know, I, like you said, I, I just don't see them making a move. Now, I, they did lose Jordan Lewis. Yeah. But they yeah, still have, yeah. but they see, still have Anthony Brown. So they still have Anthony Brown, but Anthony Brown is better in the slot. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. What, do, you know, what are your thoughts? What do you think they could do? You know, maybe not what they have to do, but what do you think they could do if they did make a move? I think they could add in the secondary if, if we're going to be quite frank. They don't need to add anything in the pass rush. I'll, I'll say that right now. You, you don't need to do much. Wide receiver, I don't think they need to do anything. Like, you're getting Michael Gallup back. I know he didn't have a catch Sunday, but he's still coming back. I, they do miss Amari Cooper. They, they do. But I told Noah people Brown's, about that. Yeah. Noah Brown's come along. It's they're not as bad at wide receivers as you think, but man, this team be a lot more scary if you had a guy like Amari Cooper in. That's all I'm saying. But you know, that's times when you give bad contracts out. Yeah, I mean, I try to tell people that CD Lamb, and he's a very good player, he's a good player. But there's you know, there's you know, there's levels to this thing. And before the season started, you had people saying, Oh, CD Lamb is better than AJ Brown. And I'm like I don't know what you guys are watching. You know, there's you know, there's a difference in the, there's a difference in the way they approach that position. You know, AJ Brown takes the lunch money. CD Lamb asks for it nicely. You know, there's a difference. And you know, I don't know. That's a you know, that's a side topic that I've been thinking about. But you know, I just you know, I just think that the Eagles in general, they they don't really need, they they don't need to make a move that's really big. They're 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 pretty much good. They need they need a foundational piece. They need something that's going to that's going to add to what they're doing. It doesn't require too much of a, a startup cost. But we have our guy Brian Dardo behind the scenes, ready to pop in. Any final thoughts before we hit this break, Jeff? Oh man, this is going to be a good this is going to be a really good conversation. Brian is one of my close friends at CBS Sports. I, I'll tell you what, this guy knows his NFL history. He definitely knows a lot about the Steelers, and that's who the Eagles play this week. So if you want to get the lowdown on the Steelers, you'll want to tune in to Good Morning Ants East because Brian's your guy. Hey, you guys heard it here first. He's Jeff Kerr. I'm Tone DeShows the second. You guys are locked in on Good Morning NFC East. We have our guy, Brian DeArdo, coming up next. Don't move, you guys. Stay right there. <laughs> 